Welcome to the Potterverse podcast pre-show. Say that five times fast. My name is Mary Larson. I am Blake. And we are so excited to be joining you here on a Saturday night. We don't usually go live on Saturday nights. No, we don't. So this, if you're brand new, uh, we are podcasters. We love to podcast about all sorts of book fandoms, TV shows, Harry Potter, Outlander, um, this is us, Game of Thrones, tons of different fandoms, all of which you can find at maryandblake.com. But tonight we're going to be podcasting about the Goblet of Fire. From the Harry Goblet of Fire. Fire. <laughs> so here's something that I'm going to ask of you, those of you who are joining us right now, to hit that share button. If you're on Facebook, there's a little arrow below this. Share it into your favorite Harry Potter groups on your wall or in your stories. Come back here and say, Expecto Patronum! This book, The Goblet of Fire, is many people's favorite book in the series. So we want to get as many Potter fans as possible in on this weekly book club. Of course, you can join us here live weekly. We do have a texting reminder service. And if one of you would do me a huge favor and write this phone number in the chat, 81010, that's the phone number. And then the message will be the at symbol Elderwan, E-L-D-E-R-W-A-N-D. -E if you text that, you will get the notifications from me for free that we are going live. And if you're out of the country, if someone else wouldn't mind writing this, it's www.join, oh wait, www.remind.com slash join slash Elder Wand. And that's how those of our international folks outside of the U.S. will be able to get the free reminder service as well. Because sometimes things like what happened this week with our kids being bananas last night, <laughs> we need to um, shift a little bit of our lives. So share, come back and say expect a Patronum. Um, sign up for the texting reminder service. And if you are a beloved member of our Patreon community at jointhenerdclan.com, write the hashtag GoNerdClanGo as our cat tries to make sure you can hear her. <laughs> uh, so we can also give you a shout out. We're going to be going live on Instagram as oh, well. Yeah, sorry, that was so my we're going to do that. And thank you so much, Allison, on YouTube for taking that for our YouTube friends. Let's make sure we get someone from um, Facebook to write the number 81010 and at Elder Wand. Just wanted to say that this is Allison's on YouTube first time joining us live. Yay! So, thank Allison, you. this one is for you. That a girl. Thank you so much. I am super cash, super cash, because I am tired. I had to go to a kindergartner birthday party today. It was the first birthday party for kids since the pandemic hit. Yes. And man, uh, do I have social atrophy. Like, I am just not used to hanging out with that many people, nonetheless that many kids, and running around and making small talk with masks on. So so much social atrophy. ignore me as I'm in my Game of Thrones sweatshirt. <laughs> and I'm in my Pink Floyd t-shirt to make her feel better. So. Thank you, thank there you. There you go. All right, so we're going to be doing a few shout-outs once again. Again, if you have shared, write Expecto Patronum in the comments below. We're getting some friends joining us on Instagram. Hello, hello, Chantel, Michelle, Shelly. Thank you so much. So if you shared, write in Expecto Patronum. If you're from the Nerd Clan, our beloved Patreon community, where as little as $2 a month, you make a huge impact and keep these podcasts going, uh, write Go Nerd Clan Go in the comments below. So let's say a little hello to some of our friends, Blake. Oh, we got Allison, as always, and Thank Caitlin, you for sharing. as always. Thank you, Caitlin. You know what? Caitlin has been a rock star in the Mary and Blake Facebook group. Yeah. Uh, I mean, bring in the heat every day with so many good Potter memes and everything. Caitlin, Thank keep you, going, Caitlin. girl. Keep going. We, You're trust in the me, right place. We see it. Uh, and we, we we appreciate it. Uh, Asineth, uh, Expecto Patron, Thank you, of course. And Thanks Nicole so and Jackie. Awesome. Jackie is excited because it's it, our show is on for her right now. And for her, it's Sunday morning at 10, 15 a.m. Oh, good morning. Where's she at? Her, sitting in her jammies, snuggled up because it's almost winter. Oh, where are you? Is she in Australia? My, that would be my guess. That yeah. would be my guess. She's definitely Southern Hemisphere. Thank you, Gloria and Kate. Uh, go Nerd Clan, go from Caitlin. We've got Heather as well from the Nerd Clan and Patricia um, and Nicole and Tammy. And Gloria and Phyllis and Jan and Jackie, thank you all so much for being such beloved members at jointhenerdclan.com. Thank you, Kate. Jan on Facebook, thank you for sharing. Allison, thank you for being a member of our community as well. Yes, Melbourne, Australia. Hi, Brittany and Shell. Thank you so much for being on Instagram. You too can share by doing a screenshot of this popping it in your stories and tagging us, Mary and Blake Media, and, and, uh, invite people to come and join the live. And for you Outlander nerds, Thanks, today, today was the first time I broke out <sighs> the claw. Which we had I, plenty of during the last season of Outlander. I broke out the claw for the first time this season. So, Love it. Uh, you know, just... Did a fire sauce in it. 
our cat is on the next level our of, cat of love. Is, and the Lumos is <laughs> like ready. Yes. She is, She's she, like, let's get this podcast started. Let's get some room tone up in here. It's like not normally Saturday, guys. So she is ready to yes. go. All right. All you right, guys ready? Go. All right. 10 seconds for. Say it with me. Room tone. From Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to the Potterverse. It's a podcast dedicated to the book and film universe of Harry Potter. So grab your favorite wands and time turners. Let's step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. Hi everyone, and welcome. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake. I hate having nightmares. Nightmares are the worst. You have nightmares way too often, too. Way too often, man. And and for those of you who uh, are big Mary and Blake media fans, uh, you guys probably remember that I actually have this really recurring odd nightmare. Oh, it is a terrible nightmare. That Mary is leaving me. It's <sighs> the worst feeling ever. And it's like different. It's different in like many different ways. Sometimes, like what one of the weirder ones that I've ever had is that like M- uh, Mary and I went on our first date and it was amazing. It was so much fun. Or and we went on a second date or whatever. And then she's like, "Oh, listen, I'll be back. I, I have to go away for like a week or so, but I'll come back and we'll meet up again." And a week goes by and Mary calls me, "Hey, are you want to get together?" "Yep, absolutely. Let's do it." And it's not the same Mary. Dun, dun, dun. It's a different Mary. It's like it looks the same, sounds the same, smells the same, but different. Mm, smells the same. Yeah, you smell like uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to know what I smell like, but okay. <laughs> Troll bogies. <laughs> Ew! Thank you. On that note, oh. goodness gracious, we are of course still delving into the very beginnings of the Goblet of Fire. We are in mere chapter two in this gargantuan book in the series. This is when things get real. This is when things get crazy and fun. Chapter two, of course, is titled The Scar. Dear Sirius, thanks for your last letter. The That bird was enormous. It could hardly fit through my window. Things are the same as usual here. Dudley's diet isn't going too well. My aunt found him smuggling donuts into his room yesterday. They told him they'd have to cut his pocket money if he keeps doing it. So he got really angry and chucked his PlayStation out of the window. That's a sort of computer thing you can play games on. Bit stupid, really. Now he hasn't even got Mega Mutilation Part 3 to take his mind (laughs) off things. I'm okay, mainly because the Dursleys are terrified you might turn up and turn them all into bats if I ask you to. A weird thing happened this morning, though. My scar hurt again. Last time that happened, it was because Voldemort was at Hogwarts. But I don't reckon he can be anywhere near me now, can he? Do you know if cursed scars sometimes hurt years afterward? I'll send this with Hedwig when she gets back. She's off hunting at the moment. Say hello to Buckbeak for me. Oh, there's a couple of things in this reading that is really important, but I'm surprised that you went with this one oh. uh, in, in, in for this chapter. I thought that you would actually go with the paragraph prior to this. Um, but we'll, we'll get there in a little bit. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. It, this chap, this chapter is a lightweight chapter. It is. It's a lightweight chapter. This, this episode probably won't be all that long. But there's some good, there's little bits in here. There's little snippets mm-hmm. that are important. And I think that previous uh, you can paragraph, read that one when we get to the it, previous like... paragraph, I thought is is an important little tidbit into into Harry's uh, psyche mm. at this very moment, which nice. is which is really important. I dig it. Ready to get into this show, my love? I do, but before we do, we would love to invite those of you listening to join us at our most beloved community, jointhenerdclan.com. It's a very special place for listeners like you who say, you know what, Mary and Blake bring Lumos in my time of Knox, and I want to support them. You see, for less than a cup of coffee... $2 a month to be exact, you can contribute to this mom and pop shop of a podcast media company. We don't have big corporate sponsors. We don't have like all the bells and whistles, but what we do have is heart and soul and determination and 
we are uh, pretty pretty consistent, I would say. Consistency. Consistency yes. is key. Consistency is key. We are bringing you some Potter once a week. May change during the week, during the days, but we're here for you. So <laughs> if this is bringing you some Lumos in the Time of Knox, or maybe you like some of our other podcasts, I highly recommend that you become a member at jointhenerdclan.com. Not only do you support us, but we actually have lots of perks. Extra podcasts, book clubs from Outlander to Bridgerton. We have bef- you know behind-the-scenes footage. We get you sneak peeks into things you get to even vote on new podcasts like they just did recently where uh, we the will be... world famous after doc show oh, how can we miss that Come so on if you have been listening to us if you laugh along with us we would greatly appreciate it join the nerd clan.com check that on out let's get into the show i solemnly swear that i'm up to no good So, Preview. yeah. I'm sorry. I was yeah. going to say previously on uh, Harry Potter. Pretty much. I mean, <laughs> this is where I generally do like a little brief synopsis of what happened in this chapter. And that pretty much sums it up like previously on Harry Potter. I mean, basically, Harry wakes from a bad dream where he relived and saw everything that happened in chapter one, essentially. Uh, Harry recalls all of his previous adventures in books one, two, and three, and gives us some background information on the characters that we met and got to know there, and then ends things off writing a letter to his godfather. Serious Black. And that's it. That's the chapter. That is it. It's a short chapter. It sure is. It just sets you up for uh, for what's coming. You know, it's funny because I feel like in the previous books, they really had to dedicate a bit more time and explain a bit more of what's going on. And by the time we get to book four, by the time we get to Goblet of Fire... Um, this came out in 2000. Harry Potter was a known thing. Like this was a thing at that point. And like people were starting to be like, oh, are you getting that book? Are you reading it? Um, If you had not read the previous three books in this series, the author's like, this is all you're going to get. This is what you're going to get in case you haven't picked the previous Mm -hmm. books up since Prisoner of Azkaban came out. We'll give you a brief little rundown in case, you know, you forgot what happened. But if you're new here, you're a muggle, and you're going to want to <laughs> pick up the other books because hold on to your butts. We're going places. We're going a lot of places in this book. So I generally don't like recap chapters, but I think that this one was done quite well. Yes, it was. It was. It, well, for a recap <sighs> chapter. Yes. Um. Oh, wow. There are... Oh, over three million copies of the book were sold. It was a record-breaking print of three point nine million copies uh, in two thousand. Which uh, this is one of the OGs. I've got my original Goblet of Fire. You know, pages stained and and well loved. Um, not as many dog-eared pages in this book. So this must have been a bookmark time. I go through times, friends, where I use a bookmark and I don't dog ear the pages. And I think that this was one of them because it was like so exciting to have gotten this book. And I was like, now this, this is a chunky monkey book. I'm ready. All right, here, here you go. Goblet of Fire was the first book in the Harry Potter series to be released in the United States at the same time as the United Kingdom. Mm. On 8th of July, 2000, strategically on a Saturday, so children did not have to worry about school conflicting with buying the book. It had a combined first printing over 5 million copies. It was given a record-breaking print run of 3.9 million, and 3 million copies of the book were sold over the first weekend in the U.S. alone. FedEx dispatched more than 9,000 trucks and 100 planes to fulfill book deliveries, and the pressure in editing caused a mistake, which shows Harry's father emerging first from Voldemort's wand. However, as confirmed in The Prisoner of Azkaban, James died first, so then Harry's mother ought to have come out first. This was later corrected in future editions. Ooh, that is something that excites me, because I do have generally like first editions of these books, and I do love it when there are mistakes that stay. <laughs> It'd be, it would be interesting to see if you had that same mistake. I probably do. Well, we're going to find out. I mean, yeah, <laughs> but I've got, the, it's, this is an OG book, so yes, I would believe that it is. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, again, this, this chapter is um, very lightweight. It, it, it resets the stage. It is very efficient with its stuff. And, I mean, we're just... It, it, 
the exposition that's that's all that it is here and where you you are being told as a, a brief run in history what has happened over the previous three books though there are a couple of different fun little things that happen in this chapter that make it better than just previously on Harry Potter uh it is Harry's interpretation of his friends. It is Harry's interpretation of what he should do with this information. And not only that, it is also setting us up with a direct comparison between uh, the Dursleys and also Sirius Black. And mentioning right off the jump that Sirius is still kind of out on the lam here, but he's still an active part of Harry's life. Even though... Harry doesn't have the fortune of living with Sirius uh, the way that he wanted to for a brief week. He thought that it was a possibility. Nevertheless, it is not this time. And that is why I am interested in reading this little bit here, Mary, the one that I thought that you were going to read, which is thus. The Weasleys were Harry's favorite family in the world. He was hoping that they might invite him to stay at any time now. Ron had mentioned something about the Quidditch World Cup, and he somehow didn't want his visit punctuated with anxious inquiries about his scar. Harry kneaded his forehead with his knuckles. What he really wanted. And it felt almost shameful to admit it to himself. It was someone like... Someone like a parent... An adult wizard whose advice he could ask without feeling stupid. Someone who cared about him. Who had experience of dark magic. And then the solution came to him. It was so simple and so obvious that he couldn't believe it had taken so long. <gasps> Serious. Oh, yes. Yep. And this is so important. This right here is so important because we are immediately establishing uh, a direct correlation between... Uh, his parents, a parent figure, and mm -hmm. Sirius Black. Um, even though Harry is not the most reliable source of information in Harry Potter books, it's easy to see here that Harry trusts Sirius, and Harry looks at him as though he is a father figure, and yeah. he does have connection beyond just the Dursleys. So special and it's it's great because he looks at it with such fondness but it is still so new that it's not immediate mm. it's not what like of course i to. have to yeah right exactly it, that's a, it's that's as a he's really thinking i need family yes exactly so beautiful so great um i love that portion and you know the author does this really cool thing where she i haven't seen this in her previous books yet where she writes something like this. Uh, where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. I can't, can't find it. It's okay. Oh, here it is. Harry needed his forehead with his knuckles. What he really wanted and felt almost shameful to admit it to himself was someone like Dash, someone like a parent. And then uh, a couple of pages earlier, um, she writes, Privet Drive looked exactly as respectable as a sub suburban street would be expected to look in the early hours of Saturday morning. All the curtains were closed. As far as Harry could see through the darkness, there wasn't a living creature in sight, not even a cat. And yet, and yet, Harry went on relentlessly back to his bed and sat down on it, running a finger over his scar again. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the pain that was bothering him. <sighs> not even a cat I loved that little reference to a cat on Privet Drive referencing right. all the way back to Sorcerer's Stone Minerva yes. McGonagall just giving us that little like you know flashback memory photo sh shot in our yeah, minds yeah. and it's it, it, you know th I think the author could have gone any way with this mm -hmm. it could have not even a black shaggy dog or yeah, you know anything but the cat one is really important because it, it, it's implicit in that, in at least in this reference, is that Harry is aware of McGonagall's presence mm -hmm. in uh, when she, well, when, when he was dropped off at Privet Drive for the first time, uh, that she was there as a cat. She yeah. was there uh, doing watch. And that, you know, is that a little bit of a, 
a recognition of that. Uh, it it feels like a it I feels like it a is. wink. It feels like a wink to those who are engaging with the material. Yeah, you know what I mean from the author. I agree. But this this repetition uh, of these words, uh, the and yet. Harry went relentlessly back to his bed and sat down and running a finger over a scar again. And then again, having the, uh, having the repetition of someone like, someone like a parent. I, I haven't noticed that in this, in these books yet, mm. you know, with these, with Harry's these getting deeper. Rep- repetitions and, uh, Harry is getting deeper. Harry, Harry is 14 now. Yeah. Ha- Harry is seeing, uh, contradictions. Mm-hmm. Harry is is more emotionally aware, and these this repetition, this um, recognition uh, of these emotions is in in the complexity of these emotions. Ones where you have to stop and think and repeat to yourself, "Wait, am I? Yeah, I am." Like, and then even when uh, even at the end of this chapter, after Harry writes his his writing here, and he writes the thing to. Uh, to Sirius, yes, thought Harry. That looked all right. He, I mean, like he's reassuring himself. He's talking to himself. He's um, f- taking uh, note in mm-hmm. the complexities that he's feeling and, and saying, "Yes, this is right." Yeah. See, again, it, it is previously on Harry Potter, but but done in a good way. But done in a way that is different, and done in a way that is uh, special to Harry, especially with. Harry's interpretation of his friends. I mean, you know, the author knew at this point how many books there were going to be in this series, what the outlines were going to be like, and she'd already had to write in the Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner of Azkaban the previously on Harry Potter stuff. And you can only do it in a similar fashion so many ways, and she didn't want to bore her audience. This is a really organic way to do it, to be with Harry in his thought process as he thinks of who can I reach to, all the while reintroducing these characters, giving us Hermione's possible reaction and letting people, if they forgot who Hermione was or if they stumbled upon this book and didn't know who she was, fools, but still they would get like a little glimpse of her. Same thing with Dumbledore, same thing with Ron, just giving this little of a backstory. And then he even gets to put in a little bit about the Dursleys, you know, his aunt and uncle and cousin who he lives with, um, and they were asleep the way that uh, Harry liked them best. It wasn't as though as they were any way to help him when they were awake. And I just thought this was a fun little bit because him living with the Dursleys, him being under their roof and having the um, ability to be with his family is something that is what keeps him alive. And he has no idea. So it's just these little sprinklings that we get inside books like this mm-hmm. that get to be part of the bigger picture, which is really neat in a generally boring chapter. The, the <laughs> recap chapter of book series are never fun, no. but this was a really cool way to do it. You know, and there's another another layer here that I just thought of. You know, the, he uh, the the author is contrasting the the Dursleys with Sirius and ha- saying how you know the Dursleys wanted Harry to be miserable at all times, mm-hmm. and, and Harry is using the dark, uh, overshadowing figure of Sirius Black to keep them in check, um, which is great. Yes, uh, and it's purposeful. Mm-hmm. The, the intent is 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 so pointed and so and acute. brilliant. Yeah, it's so brilliant yeah. and such like a. A manifestation of a fourteen-year-old kid, right? Yeah, like I'm going to stick it to him. Yeah, but in addition to contrasting Sirius to the Dursleys, we also have some contrasting against his own friends and even Dumbledore himself, the man that Harry has respected and thought there's always, always mm-hmm. going to be an answer from Dumbledore, Wolfric, Brian, Percival, whatever his name is, uh, Dumbledore, you know, Albus, whatever. We, we know. Sure. Uh, <laughs> He doesn't say Dumbledore, you know. Yeah, whatever. You know, stats are for nerds. <laughs> um, it, you know that there is there's a real difference in how he interprets Dumbledore's response uh, to Hermione and Ron's mm-hmm. response, and yet he is so uh, comfortable with talking to Sirius. It shows you how much he respects. Serious as a person, his interpretation of these events, uh, and that yes, he loves his friends, but they're kind of quirky in their own yeah, right. Yeah, um, you know, it, you know, Hermione's response is to go to a book, mm-hmm. and Ron's like, "Let me talk to my dad," and Dumb- and he, he, he's going to write a, a letter to Dumbledore, being like, "Hey, yeah, my scar hurts. What do you think?" 
<laughs> not always the best thing. No. You know, um, yeah, you do. You get to meet these people. You get to know the Dursleys a little bit. You get to know the two different worlds that Harry is in between. He's in between the Muggle world and the Wizard world. And these are kind of the key players that he has going on right now with some great background information. We were talking a little bit before about the stuff that's sprinkled in, about how, um, you know, Harry's just kind of blowing it off like, oh, you know, I, I love when the Dursleys are asleep. They do me no good whatsoever. When really just being in their house is what's saving his life. Another interesting thing that gets dropped in here that comes into play in the next book is that he can hear his cousin Dudley snoring, you know, through these walls. He can hear Dudley snoring, and that's where he starts to be like, oh, thank God they're asleep. These walls must be thin, or these moys must be loud, because in the next book, in the um, Order of the Phoenix, Dudley recalls Harry having nightmares from what ends up happening here in Goblet of Fire. He's like, yeah, I hear you through those walls at night and you have nightmares and you call for Cedric Diggory. Yeah, so right. um, it's just another interesting thing where it gets tied through. You know, there are these reoccurring threads through all of these seven books that really create such a nice cohesive storyline, even in previously on chapters such <laughs> as this every time i think about it i think of the voice on lost previously on lost yes, which you <laughs> needed gosh that show was so confusing it, it was it was it was definitely uh definitely littered with a lot of mythology mm-hmm. that you need to keep up on and having those things was important another thing that happens here too is um there is a there's already the beginnings of harry recognizing his I want to say exceptionalism but it, it's not it's his connection uh, and it's an it's an unwitting connection to mm. Voldemort okay when he says the last time my scar hurt like this I, I was with he Voldemort was yes and that makes sense was Harry with Voldemort during his dream yes that, and that's what I'm getting at. It's already alluding to the fact that there is there's a, a connection. there's a more of a connection there. And now we're talking Horcrux juice, right? Yep. Uh, so, which by the way, we still have not gotten out in the Mary Blake store. I'm going to do that. I promise. Okay. Um, I like that too. And Harry sees this and says, "Yeah, like something's up, man." He knows that there's something, and the author is already laying this foundation for you as the reader that there is something there. And it makes you question whether or not Harry was just dreaming or whether or not Harry was there. And if Harry was there, how was he there? Well, I mean, we read it, so we believe that it is real. We read it, and then it says, and then Harry Potter woke with with this. So, I mean, I guess it could be in either way. You could either read it as this entire thing was a dream, or this happened and Harry realized that it was happening. And that's what I'm getting at, because you... Was it a dream all along? You were were left with this notion of, is it a dream? But when you get some more information later Mm -hmm. on in future books, you you can go back to this moment and look at it and say, no, Mm -hmm. it wasn't a dream wasn't because Harry was there. Scott was hurting. Scott was hurting for a purpose. And he even recognized it. He tells you up front, last time his Scott hurt like this. Oh, by the way, I, I'm definitely going to have to play this. Your cousin from Boston. Last time his Scott hurt like this in the chapter of the Scott. Last time his Scott hurt like that, he was with, he was with Voldemort. Mm-hmm. And I like this too where he says, no, the thing that was bothering Harry was the last time his scar had hurt him, it had, because, it had been because Voldemort has, had been close by. But Voldemort couldn't be here now. The idea of Voldemort lurking in Privet Drive was absurd, impossible. Think of that. Absurd, impossible. It's abs- the absurdity of the idea. It's, it's one that isn't even worth thinking of. It, it, the, wh- there, there is like this feeling of um, protection, like uh, even an indetermined pr- protection uh, from being in the muggle world, almost like that Voldemort wouldn't even bother, wouldn't even worry himself with going to the muggle world, going to Privet Drive. It's just, it's ridiculous to even think. I really like that too, because it's sensing, it's highlighting this tension between the muggle world again and the, and the wizarding world. Very, very special stuff here. Again, Small things that you if you start reading into it, 
Definitely. We, of course, get another mention of the Quidditch World Cup and how the Weasleys are hoping to be bringing him. We get some more just Quidditch in general as Harry's reading flying with the cannons uh, on his <laughs> bedside table. We get recounts of how he's been injured and hurt before. All these things that are just leading us up for, for future events that are happening in the Goblet of Fire. But as we said earlier on this episode, this is really a recap chapter. Not too much there. So on that note, I think it's going to be time for a different perspective. Now, before we go into the different perspective, we would like to remind you that one of our few sponsors that we do have for the Potterverse is actually MinuteWithMary.com. In addition to podcasting and geeking out about nerd stuff and books and TV shows, I also help people feel more creative and confident when it comes to their skincare and makeup. I have heard through the grapevine that people don't understand that I am in lots of different countries, not just the U.S. So if you are a listener of ours and you're located in New Zealand, Australia, Canada, U.S., Mexico, tons of places in Europe, I mean tons of places, I most likely sell to you. I actually have warehouses in a bunch of those countries. So it's not even like you have to pay astronomical shipping. It's just normal shipping because <laughs> it's already there. So if you've been listening and like, well, maybe I'd like to check out one of Mary's mascaras. Or maybe I could send Mary a message to help me out with something. But I live somewhere else. I want you to send me that message as I would love to help you on your makeup and skincare journey. Even if it's, if it's something as simple as getting a lip gloss, as we can hopefully start to rip these masks off our face. I want you to feel fabulous. So MinuteWithMary.com or search the hashtag MinuteWithMary. You know, I went out for the first time today without my mask. Without my mask. It's allowed now in Rhode It's allowed state. now in Rhode Island. Yeah. Um, if you if you're vaxxed, if you're vaxxed and waxed, stop, ready to go. Stop. That's a line from This Is Us. <laughs> there are children listening, Blake. Um, it was weird. It was very weird. It was a weird feeling. But I smiled. And I put on a really cute lip gloss because I was like, I'm going to smile like Buddy the Elf. <laughs> Smiling's my favorite. No joke. I'm going to bring it. All right. It's time for the different perspective. Cricket, you're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger. And you are I'm in trouble. <laughs> you're 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 trouble? I'm in trouble. What do you mean you're in trouble? Trouble, trouble, <laughs> trouble, trouble, trouble. Okay. What do you got? There's <laughs> very few characters mentioned in this chapter, but yes. I figured I figured I'm gonna do something different. So this entire chapter is Harry. Hedwig's not even in the room. Yeah. So, Blake, I would like you to mention one of the characters mentioned in this chapter that is not Harry Potter, whose perspective I could be having right now. Oh, uh, that's a good one. Thank you. That's a good one. Um, Sirius. Okay. I mean, you know why I want okay. you to do Sirius? Because mm. he sends the bird. It's a tropical, tropical. bird. It's a tropical yeah. bird. What, what's Sirius doing? Oh, Sirius, wait, where are you? He's in Rio. He's in Rio? <laughs> yes. Oh. Oh, he's in Rio, and he's at Carnival, and it's amazing. He's living life. No, no, you're living life. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Hold on. Different perspective. <laughs> ma, ma, ma. <laughs> you're not picking up the high school musical? Yeah, I got it. Okay, got it. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sirius, where are you? I am in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Oh, okay, yeah. It is amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. I am working on my tan. Oh, well. I have well. the pastiest skin. Well, yeah. I mean, Edward Cullen, look out. <laughs> Edward Cullen, look out. I'm coming for you. Um, yeah, you know, I just figured, like, let's get away. Let's hang on out. There's this crazy partying going on right now, carnival, like, mm -hmm. People are just dressing up, partying all the time. So nobody cares about me. And because everybody's partying, mm -hmm. they all look kind of shaggy and, and crazy. I like am you. fitting in, man. Where are you I'm keeping Buckbeak? In. That's the thing. In or, the jungle. You, in the jungle? Yeah. yeah. Maybe you can make him look like one of them, uh, one of the uh, floats. No, I like bippity boppity booed a little oh, okay. invisible thing. Gotcha. You know, okay. yeah. he's fine. He's, he's fine. fine. Oh right, my gosh, good. he's having so much fun. Good. The only thing that I'm nervous about, though, I'm glad you brought up Buckbeak, is there's these poisonous frogs. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're we're in Brazil. Yeah. There's a lot of things that he's not used to with his diet. Um, so he keeps getting sick. Yeah. Stay away from the orange frogs. Yeah. I can't speak. You Buck can't speak Buckbeak? Buck yeah. So he doesn't understand that... Beaky, come on! Yeah. Not another orange one. Stay away from the green and the brown. Poops all night. All night. <laughs> but I'm having a great time. Uh -huh. uh, Where'd you get the bird to send to Harry? I, I'm i in Rio de Janeiro. How, de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> de Niro. Great poop on. Great poop. <laughs> 
Dijon. Get it? I don't even know what just happened. I think I'm hungry for a burger. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, truth of the matter is, is I just... Me, Mary, I just watched the movie Rio with the kids. There's yeah, sure. a lot of birds in it. So many birds. So many birds. So Sirius Black would literally have his choice of all the birds. Any bird that he could think of. Hey, you. <laughs> if it answers back, you're the lucky one. How you're you, magical. Sirius, how do you te- how do you tell the bird where to go? It whistles back at you. I just did it. Oh, oh so you can speak birds. Listen, all the birds in Snow White, uh-huh. magical. <laughs> <laughs> there was a wizard, I guess, I imagine, in, in Snow White then, because they're all magical. She was a witch, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So Not there's a wizard. Gotta be wizards. No, Snow White's evil queen was a witch. Yeah, I'm sure. Gone bad. Yeah. Tote Slytherin. Yeah, no. on the selfish side. <laughs> Not great, Bob. It's not a witch or wizard that didn't. Go- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm having I'm having an okay time. I don't really get to see people. A yeah. bippity boppity boot. Buckbeak keeps having. Are you wearing like Are problems. you wearing like the fun costumes? Are you doing the booty shake? A Nobody little bit? knows who I am. That's I'm what, living, that's what I am living. You want to live your life? Live your best life. Get I out am. there. Do, go, do some Shakira booty I'm shaking. I'm getting a tan. I'm loving it. I just. <laughs> that's it. <sighs> the end. Oh, end scene. Awesome. Good job. All right. Uh, it is now time for some listener email and questions, of course. Ooh, so if, if you're joining in live and you have any questions or feedback about Chapter 2, The Scar, put your comments below. So we're looking at you, friends, on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Those of you who are listeners and are not yet joining us live, listen, you got to join us live. And we actually have, have a complimentary text reminder service. If you are located in the United States, you can just text the phone number 81010. And in the message field, the at symbol, Elder One at E-L-D-E-R-W-A-N-D. No spaces throughout that entire thing. And if you're outside the U.S. in a fash, you can get on our complimentary reminder service too. Go to remind.com slash join slash Elder Wand. So, Blake, do we have any feedback? We got some emails. Let's get to it, shall we? Oh, Miles Head. All right, the first one comes from Kate. She writes in saying, just curious, have you ever thought of the significance of green in Harry Potter, associated with jealousy and Slytherins and the Avada Kedavra curse, but also Harry and Lily's eyes. Just curious if you think this was intentional or not. Well, Kate, I will say this. I actually have the answer for you. Do tell, Blake. I have the answer. Do tell. Uh, Yes, it does have a lot of associations with, uh, obviously, the Slytherin house, uh, dark magic, jealousy, and, of course, Harry and Lily's eyes. In in essence, it does have a lot of connotations. Uh, Like Gryffindor's colors, the green and silver of Slytherin are connected to the element they most closely represent, which is water. In wider folklore, green has long had a supernatural connection, and and the author explains that the color is said to belong to the fairies, and it has an association with misfortune and death. Consequently, green should never, and I repeat this, never... Your cousin from Boston. ...be worn at weddings. Don't wear it at weddings. Don't want to wear it at weddings. (laughs) And you know what... I definitely do. Uh, and uh, your mom did. I will stop. <laughs> I will stop. Uh, green does also have some positive associations, though, being linked with energy and rebirth. In the wizarding world, uh, the author tells us that it is used to reveal magical status to other wizards and is often in combination with other color, the color purple. Yes. So like some of the sl- students of Slytherin House, the theory behind the color is somewhat slippery. I mean, so many of them wear emerald robes and... My birthstone is emerald. We're yes. here in the month of the Taurus. So fellow Tauruses or Tauri, I don't actually know the proper pluralization of it. Sure. Happy birthday month. Next one comes from Lacey. She says, I'm sorry to get this these in questions in late. Dinner fash. Yeah, di- you know what? Here we go. Dinner fash, Number one, would the Minister of Magic know that Hermione had a time turner and therefore should have suspected that they went back in time to free Sirius because they had to write to the Ministry of Magic to get her one in the first place? Fudge is a flunky. Yeah, I don't think that fudge. I don't even know the right word, but I want to use an F, not a a floozy. floozy. Okay, fudge (laughs) Just running around town. (laughs) He's he's brainless. (laughs) Drop and trowel. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Fudge has any idea. No, it, it, that's that's for his underlings to worry yes. about. Fudge has got bigger things to worry yeah. about. 
uh, apparently like killing Buckbeak. Like rat, rat Madame Rose Murta. <laughs> I know. Killing Buckbeak. Uh, number two, were the students at Hogwarts allowed to send and receive letters during the Deathly Hallows? Hmm. Good question. I don't remember. I don't think that is delineated. My guess, if I were to put some money on it... I would say Slytherin House could. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? Bam! Just like that. A winner! And if don't... you wanted to send them outside of that house, you had to like have it read. Yeah, you had you had to like give it to Neville. And Neville, like... Oh, I was, Snuck it out. Oh, yeah. Neville would definitely be like the underground mailman. <laughs> he would be the Kevin Costner. <laughs> <laughs> he yes. would be the postman. Yes. <laughs> Great question, though. All right. Uh, number three, was Snape ever imprisoned in Azkaban? If so, when? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think that he was. And number four, did Snape ever spend time in Azkaban? Was he locked up before his trial? Um, I don't remember him being in Azkaban. I don't remember that either. Because I think because he like dished a whole bunch of stuff and mm, switched sides, that that was okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, this one, last one, comes from Jenny. She says, "Hello, I'm a new member in the Hi, loving Jenny. the Potterverse. Finally, opened myself up to watching the Harry Potter films this year in January." <laughs> And fell in love. I then devoured the books, watched the movies again, and now I'm on a second read through of the books, making up for lost time, I guess, since I was too cool when they came out during my high school years. I blew through the Potterverse in just a few weeks without realizing it. I'd be caught up by the end of book three, and now I'm remembering what it felt like before Netflix to have to wait a week for an episode of your favorite show to air. Thanks for all you do. Glound, I f glad I found y'all. Well, you know what? There's not a question in there, but I did want to include this email because that is a lot of Harry Potter. That's a lot of Harry Potter since um, January. Yeah, I love it. Like, read the second read-through of all the books, watched all the films, and has listened to every episode of the Potterverse since January. You are among your kin. You know what, Jenny? I'm gonna Thank you for send, sending this in. I want you to email us at maryandblakemedia at gmail.com. When you get this, yeah. email me, yeah. and you get any one free item from the Mary and Blake store. That's it. That's what we're doing. Okay? Sound good? Sounds great. All right. Sounds good. I like it. All right. Now it is time for the live questions. Let's see if we have any. We do. This one's from Caitlin on Facebook. She says, okay, for the people looking for a series, why didn't they just write him a letter and then follow the owl? Also, am I the only one who pictured Dumbledore on vacation as Merlin from the Sword in the Stone when he comes back from Bermuda? <laughs> I like to think that he's in Majorca. Definitely in Majorca. Right? You know, he's got his iPod. Does he have an iPod like shuffle or like a classic iPod? Or is he carrying like a disc man? Because he's got to listen to Kelly. I mean, I don't know. Great question. <laughs> Maybe he just has like some special spell. No, 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 no. He wants he wants in on the physical media. He wants in. I got I you know what? It's it's not the same. It's like it's like listening to vinyl in, instead of a CD. Mm -hmm. like if you if you bippity boppity boo up some Kelly, it doesn't sound just the same way as it does in real life. You know? That's what I'm that's that's my thought on that. Um, why didn't they just send an owl looking for Sirius? I think because Sirius travels as a dog, that would make him uh, impervious is not the right word, but that would make him untraceable, maybe? Oh, yeah. So if he's dog mode, if he's pad foot, then the owls probably can't easily find him. I bet he has a little connection with Hedwig. The other thing that I think is that the the order of the phoenix is already you know working in the ministry and has gotten the heads up from dumbledore like yeah like kingsley shacklebolt and and people like that like don't go after sirius pretend you are yeah sure send the owls to me instead <laughs> you know <laughs> like i do i think you know we go from this and then order of the phoenix in the next book i think people like kingsley shacklebolt are already in place and that if there was something like that that the order would be kind of sneakily stopping it. So yep, because that's... Hedwig does find does find him, yeah. so he has to be non dog mode at some point. Right. You know, hanging out a carnival. Uh, uh, you know, unless unless Hed Hedwig is you know he's got the inside info. Like yeah, he's in dog mode, but this is what you got to look for. Yeah. 
Yeah, that makes sense. And that's sense. why I'm saying either Hedwig's got the got the in. Yep. Or maybe, maybe Hedwig just finds Buckbeak. Yeah, but why would Can, he be able to find Buckbeak and, why not? and not and not a dog? I don't know. That's what I'm getting at. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know, guys. All right, Rachel on Facebook says, ever since I read The Deathly Hallows, I've always worn yellow to weddings like the love goods. I love that. Yeah, I nice generally enough. wear royal blue because my wedding jewelry um, had sapphires in it, and I like to wear my wedding jewelry to every single wedding that I go to because I think that it's bringing good luck and blessings from all the previous weddings. That is right. Good job. Jackie asks, is there any info or news on the live movie watching together on Zoom for Nerd Clan members? Yes, Jackie, there is some news. We are going to watch the first episode of The Last Kingdom all together. all together. And the reason why we're doing that, obviously, is because that is our next podcast. And that is the podcast that the members that join the nerdclan.com voted for. So there you go. There's an announcement for you. Here's some news. We're going to watch The Last Kingdom all together. The, the first date, episode. The date. Yeah, the, the first episode. The date of that is TBD. I we we're gonna set a date. More than likely, it'll probably be like an upcoming Saturday, uh, or Sunday, but one of the two. Uh, Once this is us ends, so this is us yes. ends this week. So we're gonna have the announcement of those, um, the showings and the virtual hangout. By the end of next week, we will have the dates and times announced for our friends at jointhenerdclan.com. Yes, Rachel says, uh, uh, guys, this is back in the '90s. It's definitely a disc man. Uh, that he uh, that Dumbledore is carrying around. Um, b -b -b uh, Jan says, oh, no, hold on. Uh, let's see what we got. Caitlin says uh, on Facebook, Harry Potter movies will be streaming on HBO Max in June, but only for June. So that is some good stuff. Uh, there's one here from Jane, Jan, uh, but I can't, I don't see the question, Jan. I'm sorry. Uh Ellen says Dumbledore has an MP3 player with just Kelly on repeat. Um, here she is, Jane. Yeah, where? Right here. Oh, here it is. Harry decided to only tell Sirius. Do you think it would have been made any difference? He'd been able to tell Dumbledore. Yes. Why do you think that, Mary? Because I think Dumbledore would have gotten back to him right away. And he would have been able to be like, well, sometimes this can happen. Or he could just give a curious. Maybe he would have let Harry in on a little bit more. But it could be putting things into play for Dumbledore. Hmm. Like, Dumbledore missed this whole flipping thing this year. Mad-Eye Moody fail. Yeah, that was a big, big time fail. So had he known about all this... Maybe he could have stopped it. Hmm. My Maya Ann says... Or maybe they would have said, maybe you shouldn't go to the Quidditch World Cup, Harry Potter. Maya Ann says, maybe Hedwig knew how to recognize Sirius because she can feel his magical trace. I think that Hedwig's got a little something. Yeah, I think I'm probably on that. And Denise here, Denise, our girl Denise on Facebook Yay. says, I watch Harry Potter movies almost every weekend. Okay, well, yeah. thank you so much, friends, for writing in. Don't forget, you can always email us at maryandblakemedia at gmail.com for your input on chapters, or if you just would like to share something Potter-related, we're here for it. Let's close it out, shall we? We shall. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. Of course, we're still right here in the beginning of the Goblet of Fire, which, as I said earlier, is many people's choice book of their favorite of this series. So if this is that for you, we need you to share this podcast. We, if you're on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, share this video with your friends, share it on your wall. This is still so early that we can get people who are either new to the Potter series or have read them, but maybe haven't reread Goblet of Fire in a long time, or people who are just still lonely and, and bored and like, wow, I wish someone liked these books as much as I did. And they can join in this once a week right. conversation. And thanks to you folks sharing so much and doing what we ask of you to help grow the podcast. Mary and I, Mary, we are now in the top 15 of Harry Potter podcasts in the world. Thank you. In the, the world. Uh, and I think that's a very important and, and, and prestigious thing, honestly, because there are 15 kabillion Harry Potter podcasts, and we're in the top 15. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're going to start to read some of these iTunes reviews in our weekly episodes just to give those of you a shout out and thank you so much. You can just go to Apple Podcasts and write a written review and yours might appear on the podcast. For now, my name's Mary. My name's Blake. And uh, Mischief Managed. (laughs) (laughs) Too many podcasts to close out to. (laughs) What a mess. My Rolodex in my mind. I'm like, and this is us too? No. And you've been listening to Outlander Cast? No. no. <laughs> go break, go brew some more tea? No. Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. Oh my goodness gracious. The brain <laughs> fart live time, my friends. Um, so we want to thank you all once again. Those of you members at jointhenerdclan.com are still hanging tight around that 800 patron member. Really, really excited. As Blake and I said, once this is us is done, we're going to be able to do that live Zoom hangout as well as the live, uh, the live watching of the first episode of The Last Kingdom together we're gonna have some other fun perks i think happening over the summer while we're in kind of a little drought of other content but we're pumped we're pumped to be hanging out with you and thank you thank you thank you thank you yep that's it all right buddy thank you so much we will see you next